there friends, got a question for you. Are you frugal? Recently I had a subscriber friend mention that they were like, well, you know, I do some of these things, but I don't necessarily think I'm frugal. And so I just wanted to quickly go through the definition of what it actually means to be frugal, because I think there's definitely some confusion out there. And some people even might think of it as a diss. Definitely some confusion. So I'm excited to get this cleared up. So let me really quickly just read the definition. And this is from dictionary.com. This is economical in use or expenditure, prudently saving or sparing, not wasteful. And then again, entailing little expense, requiring few resources. So if I had to find that myself, I would probably say something like, you know, living within your means, um, you know, spending less than you make essentially, or trying to be financially responsible, you know, those sorts of things. That is what I really feel like frugal is. If anything, I think it's a good thing and it's something that people should certainly strive for. So I have a list of 12 things, 12 attributes that frugal people do, and you don't have to have all of them in order to be frugal, and it's certainly not a competition, but I would like to just quickly go through the list and then, you know, see maybe where we score, <laughs> more or less. Again, it's not a competition, so maybe I shouldn't say score. See where we're at on the whole thing. <laughs> So the first one is going to be saving money on food. Frugal people save money on food a lot of different ways. Sometimes they'll eat at home, they will pack their lunch from home, um, you know, they'll clip coupons, they can meal plan, they can plan around what they have already, these sorts of things, eating their leftovers, stuff like that. So reducing money on food or saving money on food is definitely something that a lot of frugal people do because food is one of the major ways that your budget can get out of control. Our budgets can get out of control. So saving and making sure that we're, you know, being really um, prudent in this regard, you know, with the food category is definitely a good way to be frugal. And this kind of goes hand in hand a little bit with number two is that frugal people don't waste. We attempt to try to make sure that we use everything to the best of our ability. We'll try and make sure the food doesn't go to waste and try to plan to get it used. But you know, you can reduce waste in a lot of different ways. Leaving lights on in different rooms where we aren't, you know, waste electricity and just things like that. There are lots of different ways. I won't go on and on with all the examples, but definitely number two is that frugal people try not to waste. Number three, frugal people try to find free or cheap entertainment. This could take a lot of different, you know, shapes as well. It can be stuff like going to the library and getting free movies there or, you know, free concerts and things that are, you know, event parades and different things that go on in your community. Just finding free or cheap ways to get entertainment is definitely one of the things that frugal people strive for as well. Frugal people self-educate or self-teach. This is gonna be, you know, stuff like looking on YouTube to learn how to do things and things like that. Now, you can't obviously teach yourself everything you need to know to become a doctor. <laughs> so just because you go to college or something like that does not mean you're not frugal, but it does mean that when you're trying to learn something new, you know, you wanna learn how to bake bread, you know, or something simple like that, that you can definitely find cheap or free ways to do that. Number five is that shop carefully, like shop with a purpose. Instead of just going to a store and looking around, we'll actually go with like our list in hand where it's like, this is what we actually need, that sort of thing. And then when we do have something specific we need, we'll actually look around at the different prices and then make sure that the price that we're getting is the right price or the best price available to us. Because of course we wouldn't wanna pay, you know, $50 for something when it's 35 somewhere else. So comparison shopping can certainly save a lot of money and just shopping with purpose so that we're not going out and blindly buying whatever it is we feel like, you know, of course that can throw our budget way out of whack. We make sure to shop with purpose and with intention. Number six, frugal people buy used. And that does not mean that they have to have everything that they own used. This again can take a lot of different, you know, forms. It can be a used or older car. It can be, you know, used clothes or used furniture, stuff like that. Whatever it is, you know, and again, it does not have to be all of these, but something, some things that they get that will be used. You know, why not pay a third or half the price for something that's barely even been used at all? So yeah, used can save a lot of money. Number seven, frugal people DIY. This could be, you know, DIY fixes where we fix some of our own stuff to, stuff to save money. You know, you can DIY crafts and things like that. You know, frugal people DIY because it's cheaper. It's a lot cheaper than hiring someone or paying full price for stuff that we could actually make. So DIY is fun and it saves a lot of money. Number eight, frugal people try to reduce their bills. 
This could be, again, a lot of different things. It can be just turning off our lights or you know, save different ways on, you know, electricity or gas by hanging our clothes to dry and not using our dryer and actually helping our clothes to last longer. They could be cutting the cable and not having, you know, those bills anymore. Or a car, you know, just having a, a, a car that's paid off or whatever, these sorts of things. Just reducing our bills can help a lot because it helps, you know, make it feel like our whole paycheck isn't going to bills all the time, but also it's eliminating a lot of that stress from all those bills having to come in every month. So yeah, this is definitely helpful. Frugal people avoid expensive hobbies or habits. This is, you know, probably one of the more difficult ones because sometimes habits can be, you know, addicting. <laughs> and I won't use any examples this time, but definitely people who are striving to be as frugal as possible will try and cut out any of these expensive habits and, you know, any of these expensive hobbies because, you know, we obviously know that that can be a strain on our budgets. Number 10, frugal people do productive hobbies. So this is gonna be stuff like gardening and things like that, or growing fruit trees, or just having, you know, those DIY crafts and different things like that. So having a hobby or doing something in our free time that actually is productive is actually very useful to us, you know, later in life or even now because we're going to be, you know, saving money <laughs> as we're going along. So, you know, instead of just having you know, pure entertainment that really doesn't do us any good, having some sort of a hobby that actually produces something good for our families is definitely something that a lot of frugal people strive for. And that's why gardening is probably my favorite hobby. I really enjoy being outside anyway, but also just growing food and stuff that's going to actually help reduce our bills. It just makes me feel really good. Number 11, which is probably the most controversial of all of them, frugal people save things. This could be a lot of ways, you know, you can, like I had a screen that I needed to fix last year. Well, instead of getting rid of all the rest of the screen material, like, okay, that's all, I fixed all my screens, you know, I'm gonna save that extra material and then, you know, when we have something like that come up later, we have the ability to, you know, bring that back out and fix the screen again. Instead of, you know, constantly just getting rid of things or my kids when they were younger, they're two years apart. So I would always box up and save the older daughter's clothes so that, you know, two years later when the younger daughter was that, you know, size, well, then we would have like an entire wardrobe what felt like for free. So instead of being like, oh, it's two years, you know, I don't want to have to save that stuff for that long, get rid of it, you know, I saved it so that we would save a lot of money later on. So. Definitely, this does not mean frugal people are hoarders. <laughs> we save things that are useful because we know that that can help save us money down the road. So leftover materials from jobs and things like that. There's been a lot of times when I'm like, you know, I don't think this is gonna have any purpose, but I'm gonna throw it over here anyway and keep it. And then who knows, you know, two, three, five months later, even a year later, or even a couple years later, I have dug some stuff out and been like, I am really glad that I saved this because now it's really coming in handy. And honestly, when we moved, we got rid of a bunch of stuff because we wanted to obviously lighten the load. And now there are times when I'm like, what happened to that stuff that we had? That would be useful for this thing over here. And I realized that I actually got rid of it. <laughs> so unfortunately, <laughs> I have regretted giving away or getting rid of some of the things that we have had over time. And that definitely motivates me to try and organize my stuff and make it to where it's not like I said, like I mentioned, it's not hoarding, it's saving useful things, especially building materials, because there seems like a lot of times when stuff comes up, when we'll use stuff. Um, but yeah, saving things, knowing that in the future that we will, you know, potentially use them is definitely a habit that frugal people do and it really does pay off. And then lastly, number 12, frugal people use reusables because we don't like to have to spend all of our money constantly on things that we're throwing away. So this could be a lot of things, you know, using real dishes instead of, you know, uh, paper throwaways and things like that, you know, um, rags to clean our kitchen or just our whole house really you know reusable rags has saved us a lot of money over having to buy just mega amounts of paper towels over the time cloth diapers i cloth diapered both my kids and it wasn't weird and i actually really liked them i actually preferred them a lot over the disposable types and i kind of wondered why everyone else wasn't getting on board with that because cloth diapers are pretty awesome 
So yeah, there are a lot of different ways that we can use reusables, but that is definitely number 12 on the list of things that frugal people do. They find some sort of reusable to use and they use them. So I was wondering, again, it's not a competition, but I would like to know where you're at with things. Are you maybe like a six out of 12? That's pretty good. You know, maybe even an eight or even a 10 out of 12? Where are we at? And again, you don't have to follow, you know, say yes to every one of my examples and you don't even have to say yes to all of my examples specifically. You can have your own examples. But yeah, as long as you can say yes to something in some way on each category, then it's a yes for that thing. So <laughs> I'd like to know where you're at with this. Are you frugal? Because I bet you are. <laughs> Thanks for watching my video. I'm Frugal Green Girl and we'll see you next time.